Hi, welcome to the learning of video game art through Autodesk Maya. In this video podcast, I would like to get you started with Maya by first familiarizing with its UI. Through this podcast, you will be directed to get yourself a legal copy of Autodesk Maya as a student or a faculty member. Later, I shall walk you through the key elements of Maya's user interface and its interaction control that you ought to know. First, let's browse to the Autodesk educational site and you would need to register yourself an educational account with Autodesk for getting the software. Do fill in your personal particulars and the institution that you are affiliated to. And for the values of integrity and honesty, I would strongly recommend you to register the account with your school's .edu email address. Next, let's log in into our Autodesk account after the email activation. You should be able to see your name in the head-up display once you have logged in. Let's close the head-up display and navigate to the student portal. Do click on this link if you are a student of a higher education. Next, let's scroll our way down and click on the icon of Autodesk Maya. This would land us to the downloading page and as you can see, you shall be given a free student license to use Maya for 3 years. So, please do distance yourself from the Pirate Bay. Next, choose the version of Maya that you would like to own and for our context, I shall select 2014 and set the language to English with the 64-bit windows. And within seconds, a license key will be issued to you. In the same time, the granted license keys was also being sent to you as an email for safekeeping purposes. Next, just hit the installation link to download Maya onto your personal computer. The process of downloading and installation would take quite a while if you are on a lower internet bandwidth. Now, let's fire up our Maya applications once the installation is completed. Okay, as a start, let's close this highlight window away. As a new user to Autodesk Maya, I would strongly recommend you to go through all the one-minute startup movies at your own pace. The provided startup movies has lots of valuable tips about the interaction control in Maya. For now, let's choose to close this startup menu. Should you ever need to access these startup movies again, simply click on the help menu. You shall find the one-minute startup movies here. Okay, to some of you who are new to 3D tools, you might not have an idea of how extensible Maya is, for it is an industry-leading 3D application that can reliably handle 3D modeling, animations, simulation, lighting, and even rendering within one single package. With all the high-end features being wired together, Maya is also touted to be very complex to learn and master. For instance, each of Maya's killer features will have its own menu set that tie with a different level of functionalities. It will take you quite a while to fully assimilate into Maya's workflow. To learn about Maya, you can start by studying the official guides that are given by Autodesk. And as you can see, there will be some readings to do before you get started. Actually, you can speed out your learning time by selectively focusing on the UI elements of Maya. First, let's start with the viewport. Just think the Maya viewport as your workspace or a fourth dimension canvas that allows you to create and evaluate your 3D model. The viewport is a flexible workspace which is meant to be customized for suiting all sorts of production workflow. And as time goes by, you will learn how to extend it efficiently. Next, you ought to know where the shelf is. The shelf is a shortcut placeholder that enable you to activate all type of Maya to set and the functionalities that found in the top menu bar. Next, you will not want to miss the channel box and the layer box. The channel box is another important interface that's going to be frequently accessed by us. Channel box lets you edit the dimension of your 3D object with all kinds of values. You shall spend some time with it in the next exercise. As for the layer box, it's meant for you to organize and manage the type of 3D objects that you would like to display in your viewport. After knowing the channel box, you will not want to miss where the toolbox is. The toolbox is a place that keeping all the transformation too, such as the tool of select, move, rotate and scaling. In practice, we hardly pick up any of these core transformation tools with a click or mouse. Rather, we would activate the transformation tool with a keyboard shortcut key that widely known as QWERTY. 
As for the Lewis helpline panel, the helpline panel is a feedback unit that tells you the steps or requirement for using a certain tool. The helpline is quite responsive and helpful when you are stuck at any unfamiliar tool set. You will notice its usefulness when you are building your own game level. Lastly, here are the animation-related playback controls and the Maya command line console. Like any other 3D applications, Maya allows you to write some code for automating your workflow. You shall get to learn more about it as we progress along. Okay, now let's get our hands on for customizing the Maya's UI. As many of you would use Maya with your own laptop, you will notice that the spacing of the viewport is kind of small and not efficient for complex modeling tasks. Actually, you can hide away some unused UI panels during modeling for maximizing your Maya's viewport. Go to the menu of display, choose UI elements, then mouse over to the folding line of the extended menu. Simply click on it for tearing it out as a standalone window. Then uncheck the time slider and range slider. We are not going to use these animation features when building a game level, but you will be tasked to use the animation timeline soon. Now let's close this UI window away. Alternately, you can also maximizing your viewport by collapsing the channel box when you are not using it. Or you can manually allocate the spacing that accustomed to your needs. In Maya 2014, there's a newly added modeling toolkit that meant for supporting the read topology workflow, and we shall use it in the advanced module. Next, let's change our Maya menu set to polygon for shooting our context in game art development. Both of these edit mesh menus is going to be a frequently accessed by us when crafting a game level's object. In the same time, let's direct the shelf to focus on the polygon two sets. For the purpose of test drive, Let's click on the Pyramid Creation tool and then mouse over to the viewport. Simply click and drag with your left mouse button for creating a pyramid. Next, go to the Viewport's Panel toolbar for turning on the shaded display. You can reposition this pyramid to its origin by resetting its translate XYZ to 0 via the channel box. Or you can activate the Move Manipulator for pulling the pyramids off the grid. Do try out the other manipulators such as rotations and the scaling too for changing the sizing of the pyramid. And for the sake of dimensional precision, we should refrain from using the scale too if you are crafting an architectural model and mechanical parts. Do keep a habit to specify the desired dimensions of your object through the inputs node that found in the channel box. Here, you can customize your pyramid mesh with the different subdivisions and number of size. Next, you can use the scroll view of your mouse for changing the viewing distance of the 3D object that you are working on. And to change viewing angle about the object, you will need to hold down the alternate key of your keyboard together with the left mouse button. Then, simply drag at any part of the viewport. Also, you can hold down your alternate key together with the middle mouse button for panning around your viewport. It will take you a while for getting used with all these viewport controls, and it is just a matter of time for it to become part of your muscle memory. Next, you can switch your perspective viewport into four quadrants by clicking on this panel layout icon. This would give you the visual access to the photographic views such as the top, front, and side view. Alternately, you can also switch the layout of your viewport back to the perspective view by first mouse over to the perspective viewport, then hitting a spacebar key from the keyboard. In the same time, you can hit the spacebar again to toggle the perspective viewport back to its photographic views. Should you hold down the spacebar key without releasing it, you can get access to all Maya's two sets that are found in the menu bar and the shelf. And by releasing the spacebar, the interface will return back to its original state. Lastly, 
there's this little rotation cube that can be found at the top right corner of your perspective viewport. This little view cube is a lazy man shortcut for viewing your model from different perspective angle. Please do take note that the indicated front and side view of the cube is not the same as the autographic views of front and side. I would strongly advise you not to use this view cube during modeling. And that's all for this introductory podcast about Maya's user interface. And you have learned to identify the key UI elements that found in Maya and several others of its shortcut keys as well. Please do spend some time for going through all the one minute startup movies before you embark on the second part of the introductory podcast. And thank you.